Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 12 of our FTB Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today guys, we have a decent amount planned. Like I said last episode, I want to go ahead and get through this entire quest line down here. So that's all of the pneumatic craft stuff, basically. Like, that's pretty much all of what this is. However, there's a few things we need to do before we get that done. And one of those is getting better silver. Now, we're still going to use the same method to get silver, which is the cinnabar we used last episode. However, I want more per each ore that I have. So what I want to do is I want to summon the tier 2 crusher. However, to summon a tier 2 crusher, we need to summon a possessed endermite and then summon a tier 1 crusher first. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to summon the first tier, or sorry, the endermite first. And to do that, we need hydrant's lure. So if you go into your occultism book, and if you remember, we checked everything off, and you go to Pentacles, Hadrian, or Hadrian's Lure is right here. And all you have to do is click Show multi Block Preview in the bottom right corner here. And you will be able to see exactly where to place Chalk and such in the overworld. So if I grab my Gold Sacrificial Bowl, which is just a Sacrificial Bowl, which is other stone, surrounded by gold plates. So we have four of those because we're going to be doing a few rituals today. I have my White Chalk here which was the white chalk we made last episode, tossed into a spirit fire. The gold chalk is just gold dust in a glowstone with a white chalk, thrown into a spirit fire as well. So if we just go ahead and follow the signals on the ground and paint in each rune color, and then go ahead and place some candles down. Oh, I don't have candles on me. Do need candles. So with some candles, which I got from the Cataclysm, one of those Cataclysm dungeons in the nether, I believe. So those don't exist anymore, unfortunately. I believe the devs have removed them. However, this is our pentacle. We have placed down three sacrificial bowls in our golden sacrificial bowl. And if you look at the recipe, you need a golden sacrificial bowl in the middle and then three pedestals for your uh, ritual for this one specifically. Not all of them are same. Some require eight, some require six, four, two, so on and so forth. The recipe will always tell you. So we'll go and stick each item in the bowls. We'll put our foliot book in the middle and we'll use an egg on the ritual. And if we speed it up with our temporal pouch, it will instantly start to summon and we can kill the endermite. And we got ourselves endstone right off the bat. So that is that summon done. We're never going to need this circle again, by the way. So I'm going to get rid of it. And they give you a chalk brush, which is from one of the quest rewards, I believe, for making, yeah, for making a white chalk, you get a chalk brush. This is really useful. You just right click the ground to remove uh, chalk summons on the ground because otherwise breaking this takes forever. And it's just not ideal. So you just use your chalk brush and you can get rid of all the chalk. We'll get rid of these for now and I'll get rid of all my candles as well. So fun fact, it turns out I actually did need to go ahead and do this again. I was preparing for the other ritual as you see over there. And then I realized I need four endstone to actually get more endstone. So I actually have to do this twice total as long as I get two endstone again from the same ender, ender, endermite that is. However, yeah, you need to do it twice so you can get infinite endstone. Now, there is another way to get endstone, and that is using generalized ender prediction. And this is pretty easy to get. You just got to do match fabrication for uh, endermen, because you get this enderman from a quest. So, to be fair, there is another way to get enderstone, but this way is really easy. It's pretty cheap, too. The netherite scrap you get from nether villages. And by the time you need more netherite scrap or netherite in general... You will have means of getting it. However, the reason I wanted to get endstone is because I've changed our setup a little bit over here. I've also gone ahead and put two gold upgrades in each one of these chests as, well, let's just say we have a decent supply of iron, gold, and copper, and all this such, right? Like, I'm, I'm not lacking anytime soon. And as you see, we have nether quartz and nether warts as well, and that is from soul sand here. Now, the reason I can get soul sand is... I've changed these all to material generators, and I don't have this one hooked up to a hopper, it seems. There we go. <laughs> Back in business. So, the reason I've gone ahead and set this up like so is because this is just future-proofing our system. Eventually, we will need all of these mad gens set up at, like, max speed upgrades. And, well, first of all, like I said last episode, cobble generators can't make these three materials here, so that's endstone, soul sand, and netherrack. Obviously, you can make these ones. However, I want them to be all the same speed. So we're going to keep it this way. The material generator for gravel here is a pickaxe. Material generator for sand is a hammer on top of gravel and hammer on top of sand to get dust. 
and then hammer here on top of netherrack or nether brick to get crushed netherrack hammer on top of soul sa soul soil to get soul sand and then we'll do a hammer on top of end stone bricks to get ourselves crushed end stone okay so now we have crushed end stone set up however crushed end stone can only be used in a spring line infused dash dash mesh so we can't actually get anything forever right now but not a concern it's dimensional shards and end pearls two things we aren't in need of at the moment so i'm not too worried however i'd rather have this start building up now and like i said in the future once we have diamonds we will speed all of these up but we want to get back to occultism so to get started with the first crusher, we need soul steel, copper, and a side alloy in an iron plate. And we just chuck that around a book. And once again, we can speed it up with a temporal pouch because otherwise these things take so long to make. It's just not worth it. But we will get this guy some endstone, which I guess I will need to make endstone actually. So I'll have to destroy this material generator, place my Paxo on it for now, I guess. Where did that go? Did that go in there? I did. We'll do you, and then we'll do my packs. Like, actually, this pickaxe works, right? Silk touch. Yeah, that should work. Nope, that's old endstone. Can I smelt this? Yeah, okay, I can smelt that. That's fine. Well, that's perfectly. That's enough. We don't need any more than that for now, at least. So if I come over here with my newly acquired endstone and shift right click this guy, you can also throw it on the ground and he'll pick it up. However, it's just so much easier to shift right click them. But as I said last episode, if you remember, this guy has an essence decay. And it's at 0% right now, and it will go very, very slowly up to 100, and eventually this guy will despawn. However, by the time we get our second one, we're never going to need this guy again. No offense. Brecka Ryan, we will no longer need him. And then this gives you everything you need to make the next chalk. So, we're going to make purple chalk, and we can get our second tier crusher. So, impure pure chalk. Now it's pure chalk, or purple chalk, I guess. And we will probably still need AVR Circle for something in the future, so I'm going to keep that. However... Now we want to call Ofix's Calling. Small problem here. To get Ofix's Calling, you actually need Skeleton Skulls placed down in the ritual, which is fine. However, with our current mob farm setup, where is our mob farm? Just over here. I got lost. With our current mob farm setup, we don't have any Skeleton Skulls, like at all. But what you can do is you can give yourself a Spiritus Rune, and these will drop player loot. If you remember, these drop player loot if we go into powering up the spiritus rooms give player kill drops instead of fe so that also like implies skeleton skulls because the beheading upgrade from mob mashers is enriched redstone and while we're nowhere near osmium and all of that so we can't use the beheading upgrade inside of a mob masher even if we wanted to so what i'm going to do is i want to go ahead and get myself a wither platform setup aka sorry another platform setup in the nether to spawn some wither skeletons potentially and some other mobs hopefully and we will see what we can do okay i've gathered up some materials here i just need some vector plates which is slime balls sugar and uh any kind of stone so we have plenty of that grab a bunch of cobblestone and i grabbed myself this chicken feed that we got from the wandering trader last episode and we can make some more cursed earth and hopefully that'll give us better spawns for wither skeletons Okay, I'm just down here. I was spawn proof in my island, and if I middle right click, oh, I gotta do this while I still have fight left. <laughs> oh, I gotta feed this to a chicken. What am I doing? Obviously, that's not how that works. Okay, I killed one of my chickens from my cake factory, right? Now, with flight, which I should have for like 30 seconds, I just shift right click under there, and we get a bunch of mobs. Oh, there's a drop bear. How did he get out? Oh, and I did want to set this up here with a item collector. And I should just be able to sit here and kill mobs for a bit. Oh, we got a ghast. Wait, did we get a ghast here from that? We did. That means we can make a mob imprisonment tool. That means we can capture a wandering trader. Oh, that's actually very useful. And I'll have to wither uh, five wither skeleton skulls as well. Oh, this is actually great. I'm probably going to set up an auto farm in here, like eventually, with maybe either a reaper generator or something of the sort. I do have six of these. I need nine. Or just an actual skull drop would be useful too. But we'll be back once we have that. Okay, I got myself nine skull fragments. I unfortunately didn't get a whole skull from any of those, but it's fine. We can grab ourselves our further where those we can grab ourselves our first wither skeleton skull, which is nice. And what I want to do with this is make a Spiritus Rune. Okay, and there's our Spiritus Rune. Now this should give me Wither Skeleton, or sorry, a Skeleton Skull Drops, if I'm not mistaken. So I can actually just chuck it in there. I don't think it would cause any problems. Oh, my Bookworm died. 
Well, that's unfortunate. However, if I look in here, we should see a skeleton skull. Pretty fast, I'd imagine. So I'm just going to wait on those. Well, actually, I do need four. So we'll be back once we have four. I really have to stop destroying this circle, I swear. Because after about 15-20 minutes of waiting for a skeleton skull to appear out of the Spiritus rune, nothing happened. And I mean nothing. So, and I saw, I don't know, like 40-50 skeletons die. I got a bunch of bows, got some armor, nothing else though. So, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to summon a possessed skeleton, which will always drop one skeleton, at least one skeleton skull, on kill. So I grabbed four binding books just so I can summon four of them. And now that we can make a mob imprisonment tool with the Gwen Gastier we got, we can move chickens over here as you need to summon a chicken to kill it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and kill four of these, get my skulls, get the crusher, and then we can actually continue on with the today's episode. <laughs> okay, that was two, not bad. Oh, we only got one from that one. Okay, I'm going to have to do it again, unfortunately. Okay, we have our four skulls now. So I can go ahead and place them down. I don't like how that's placed. Place them down, and that's our summoning circle. So we can finally make our crusher, which is gold dust, iron dust, silver dust, and copper dust around a Ginny book binding. Now this took way longer than I actually intended it to. However, we can get ourselves our grinder or crusher finally. So I'm just going to speed it up and then I have a mob imprisonment tool, luckily, coincidentally, to actually pick them up because soul gems, I believe, aren't in our wheelhouse just yet triggers higher binding i believe this is afrit essence it might not be so we probably could have made a soul gem actually however now we have this guy and we can pick him up and just to show you he does not despawn there's no despawn timer compared to this guy over here who might be like one percent by now five percent okay it's a lot faster than i thought and just to check still no skulls bunch of armor though but no skulls so this is a quick little setup i threw a create seat down and if i pick this guy up i can show you so it's create seat with a hopper directly on top and a chest on top of that very simple inside this hopper we have an entity tracker and if you just shift right click your mirror down or your miner or crush or whatever it is called and you give it some ore so we'll give it the silver ore we have which we don't so let's see if we have any raw ore do i have anything he could crush by chance no, I don't. But I do want to grab some silver. So I should have some cooked up over here. Potentially, I have 13. Awesome. So to show this guy off, we're going to go ahead and filter silver dust down below, which luckily I have some. And all I've done is I set up an item collector on my vault here. However, I don't want it to pick up anything else other than what he's crushing. So I'm just going to set a whitelist on the silver dust. And we'll chuck this guy all the silver. And since it's an entity upgrade, it will find the nearest entity and give them the items and this guy will crush and eventually if we look up silver dust it'll spit out in here so we'll just wait and there we go three silver dust per ore so the next tier you'll get four and then the tier after that you'll get six so it is really nice however we can get three for now as the next crusher is out of our range However, I can finally move on with today's episode as I now have a source of actual silver because 11 ore making 33 is a lot better than only having 11 total. So we got all that done just to triple our ore output, which is kind of nice. Now to get started with today's episode, properly finally, is I want to get our first PCB. Now multiple PCBs obviously, however I do just want to get one for now and we will make plenty plenty more in the future because these are quite a pain to make. However, we'll just get started with that today. So first thing you need is a magma crucible. Now the reason we want a magma crucible first is because you need a magma crucible to make molten silver. And molten, molten silver is a key ingredient in acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is the base for quite a few things coming up. Now the next thing we need is volatile redstone. And then we get volatile redstone is infusing redstone dust with acetaldehyde in a thermonemotic fabricator. So we're going to go ahead and craft ourselves one more of these as we will need it. And in the fluid mixer is also something we'll need to combine molten silver and ethanol. So we'll grab ourselves a fluid mixer as well. Then you need a fractioning still, which requires an external heater, which we haven't made yet. And the fractioning still is required to process the volatile redstone into both destabilized redstone and redstone acid. Destabilized redstone will be used later in the future to process our logic circuits into empty PCBs, as well as fluid crystals, However, that is currently out of our wheelhouse, and then redstone acid is used to make etching acid, 
And if you've ever done pneumatic craft before, etching acid is how you make PCBs. Now, to actually use this etching acid, we need ourselves an etching tank. The etching tank will house the acid, so that's pretty simple there. We also need phenolytic resin, and phenolic resin requires another fluid mixer, and this will be to make duroplast sheets. Now, the duroplast sheets will allow us to make the circuit backplane. I know this is a lot of information, so I'm going to try to make this all very simple once we set it up. However, the circuit black plane is required to make the logic circuits, which, if you remember from a second ago, is actually used with the Cyberlays Redstone to make the empty PCBs. Now, these empty PCBs have to go inside a UV light box, which we will need some redstone lamps for, actually, which I did not craft. So as I was saying, these UV light boxes will be used to make the PCBs craftable. It sounds a little weird, however, it's pretty simple to explain. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a UV light box, and if you remember from a few episodes back, we used the villagers to get these PCB blueprints, right? So we can actually, that's why we needed them, is so we can make the UV light box. Now, with the UV light box, what you do is you place your empty PCB in there, and now it means the etching with the etching tank will be able to make an unassembled PCB. Now this will all be shown once we have it set up. However, with the unassembled PCB, you can make yourself a finished PCB, and that is the end goal for today. And if you remember once again from the villagers before, we got capacitors and transistors from the villagers rather than having to make them. However, these are just made inside a pressure chamber. Now, I'm going to workshop a setup to make all of this very similar to our current setup down here. Because like I said, we will need ethanol for this. And I have changed this up a little bit, by the way. And our neurotic craft stuff is off currently. As there is an upgrade I will be making in just a second to use a flux compressor. Which is the exact same setup. However, the flux compressor here uses the power of energy to make pressure rather than, well, rotational force. And that's because we're just running out of rotational force. And it can't actually speed this guy up fast enough. I have gone ahead and made uh, three more diesel engines, maybe two, I don't remember. I made some more diesel engines. <laughs> I want to put that redstone back. And we're down to nine buckets, so these are actually using too much diesel because our machines down there are off. So I really need to fix our system here. And to do that, I'm going to use a flux compressor so I can get rid of the usage of all of these diesel generators as, well, they're just, they're using up too much diesel. I've realized, so I want to make myself a flux compressor, and that's why I've configured this mechanical crafter like this. So we're just jumping around a bit here. However, flux compressor, an electric motor made on our mechanical crafter here, and then it is reinforced pressure tubes, which we'll be using in a second, which is latex rubber in a pressure tube inside of a pressure chamber, so also really easy. And then this high voltage coil block will be HV wire coils, which is another thing I will be setting up here in a second. And these guys are aluminum wire, MV wire coils, and steel wires in an induction smelter. And then the MV wire coils are electrum wires, which is once again, just the rolling press with the plates. So I'm gonna go ahead and craft all that up off screen. It is a lot because I do wanna keep this episode short. However, it's just a bit of electrum, steel, and aluminum and we have infinite silver gold iron well we don't have infinite silver but we have a decent supply of silver so i'm going to go ahead and craft all that up into electrum right now small progress update i know we all this is everything i set up in the past like two three episodes however i'm tearing it all down and i'm going to rebuild the entire section as i wasn't like i planned this how i wanted it however i think i started doing it backwards so what I want to go do is I kind of want to build ethanol towards biodiesel in a biodiesel ending on this side. So I want ethanol starting over here, biodiesel ending over here. And that is also, biodiesel will be closer, but that's not the biggest concern. Is that ethanol is kind of the fundamental for a lot of things we're about to use. And I want it to be the first thing we see. And you read, at least in English, you read right to left. And it just makes more sense for everything to be over here. Sorry, you read left to right. What am I saying? You read left to right. And I want everything to start over here and then kind of just go down a long train. I want to push these guys back into a corner over here 
just because once again these won't be permanent i'm going to use phytogenic insulators eventually once we have lumium and so we'll push those back in the corner and what i want to do is i want to move my latex probably underground and have a tank just pushing upwards into two different sections because once again we'll need latex for something else and i'm not going to make plastic down here anymore i'm going to have latex be made for plastic specifically like up top in our factory and then down here latex will specifically be only for new metacraft so we won't have the processing unit down here so i'm going to spend an hour maybe maybe two hours reorganizing this entire system i've gone ahead and made a bunch of electrum i used uh, 16 of our silver to make electrum and i'm down to eight now because i made some hv wire relays and connectors or not those it's the wire coils here which require the mv wire coils and then these were also used to make the high voltage coil block which was used to make our flux compressor which is right here which was the electric motor like i showed which is just very simple it's a few things up in a mechanical craft up there so like i said i'm gonna go ahead and reorganize this entire system as our episodes have been pretty heavy with pneumatic craft However, I'm going to explain everything after I have it all set up, as this will take a while, and I'm not sure it's the best content. Okay, small progress update here. I've gone ahead and rebuilt everything we had previously. I haven't started on anything new as of yet. This is just the system we had before. I'll quickly go over it, but it is pretty simple. I just have a aqueous accumulator below here to fill up a buffer for water. It goes in the water tank. Mushrooms makes the yeast culture. Yeast culture, once again, pushed into the ethanol. Ethanol pushed into this tank. The ethanol is going to get split in between three different zones. So I'm going to have a pipe running underneath to get it to make over here to make uh, acetyl as acetaldehyde. So it's going to go into a fluid mixer over here. However, I need it in three spaces. So it is going for over here to make ethylene with the sulfur dust, which it's not doing yet because we haven't built up enough pressure. It's going upwards to make vegetable oil oh i need glycerol Ooh, this wasn't planned too good because this does need pressure i'm going to need somewhere to put glycerol as well i just realized hmm i might have to move this over somehow i might move the sulfur dust below this processing plant here just so i can get glycerol out because yeah eventually we won't have biodiesel being made we'll be using oil refinery right so biodiesel will be null and void however i'm probably going to have to move this sulfur dust underneath so i can get the glycerol out and i have my sequential fabricator making tomato seeds and i'll show you the back in just a second i have latex up here going into the fluid mixer and then back here we set up our garden closures again just with another aqueous accumulator just a second one logistical transporters and we have our drawer over here i lost everything i think it fell into the void so i had to make another drawer and then over here we have the same setup once again disconnected fluid extractors with the flux duct and then using the hv wire connectors to set this guy up and yeah we have everything there set up so i just wanted to catch you guys up to speed and i'll be back once i've done everything in this section here well most of it at least i spent way too long on this setup I've been here for about an hour and 10 minutes since we last recorded. Well, I did a little cut in between there just to show off the beginning setup. However, from when I first cut out till now, it's been about an hour and 10 minutes of getting other materials, rebuilding some things, making new machines that I forgot in the first place, and trying to figure out the most compact way to set this up. However, unfortunately, we won't be able to make this the most compact yet without things like ender tanks, quantum entangle, entangle blocks, and ender chests and everything, right? However, I have set this up in a way that works. So manually, I am going to fill my silver, which will go into a magma crucible, which will go into a fluid mixer, which is pumped in full of ethanol. Now it's just a pipe running underneath to fill this guy with ethanol. And then this is mixing to make the acetyl acetyl delhide nope never gonna get that one right and it pushed into this drawer now this drawer is being pulled into but sorry it's being it's pulling into this drawer and then it is getting mixed up here with latex however i have removed the pusher upgrade that's pushing upwards in here normally just because i have got enough phenolic resin phenolic resin what is this phenolic resin yeah i've got enough phenolic resin i have 20 duroplast sheets and the duroplast if you remember is so it's latex and acetaldehyde and then using the phenolic resin on top of 
paper in a fluid encapsulator, which I forgot to make earlier, makes duroplast. So I made 20 duroplast sheets. That is plenty for now, considering we don't have infinite silver until we get to the moon. Now, silver, done. Sorry, vanilla resin done with the silver. Now, the silver also travels into this tank to make a citadel hide, which goes underneath into this thermonomatic processing plant with redstone. Now, it hasn't actually worked yet because I did forget that it needed heat to cook. So I had to add a vortex tube, which means all my pressure in my system that built up had to be dispersed into a new machine, which cut it down entirely in half. So I am currently running low on pressure. However, this will build back up in pressure and this will make in here, it will make our volatile redstone, which is once again, a citadel hide and redstone. And it makes 250 per 250. So it's not the best. We don't get any excess, but it has to be at 1100 degrees. That's why the vortex tube with thermal lagging is right here. Now, this guy will be split into this drawer right here, which will push into two different places. For now, I have this fluid encapsulator turned off. I have auto input disabled and I have no inputs. This is for a later project as we require this to make both the new magnets and advanced control circuits later on. But for now, we don't need any of that, obviously. For now, all we need to worry about is the fraction still. So that is future proofing. However, the fraction still is right over here. This and the fraction still will make both destabilized redstone and redstone acid. The destabilized redstone will go into one of these two drawers. I haven't, it hasn't worked yet. So we'll figure out which drawer it goes into. And then I'll set the fluid encapsulator here with the destabilized redstone so that we can make our anti-PCBs and also flux ducts in later. Like we'll have flux ducts too. So we can make some more of these, which is nice. However, this fluid drawer here or whichever one has the volatile redstone will be pushed into this fluid encapsulator. And then whichever one doesn't will have redstone acid. This redstone acid will be bring up will bring upstairs. Since I'm not sitting up create down here, I have no rotational force. As you've seen, I've removed the belt. I have no rotational force down here as there's no necess necessity for it. So once we have the redstone acid, I'll just manually bring it up as we only need a limited amount of PCBs. I'm assuming like, I think like maybe 16 to 18 PCBs throughout this entire playthrough, maybe 20. So eventually we'll have this gone and we'll just have the fluid encapsulator with volatile redstone in it. However, for now, what I've gone and done is set this up and we'll just bring the tank up and we'll make etching acid eventually to make the PCB, which will go into the etching tank and the UV light box, which will set up once all this is actually flip filled up with pressure. However, this is just slowly filling back up with the pressure now. So unfortunately, this guy over here is kind of fluctuating in pressure temperature right now. So I'm going to have to add new speed upgrades. However, each time you add a speed upgrade, the heat increases. That's why I have heat sinks all around here. What they do is they cool down, obviously, the flux compressor because it generates heat as it also generates power. However, the problem with this is, is that the only way to remove the heat from uh, heat sinks specifically is with, with air gate tube modules. Now the air gate tube modules, very easy to make. It's just a pressure tube and iron bars. However, what happens with them is they will repel and attract entities once they have pressure, right? Well, once they have positive pressure, they repel entities. You can eliminate this with upgrade cards and the upgrade cards are right here the module expansion card these can upgrade them so that they won't push players and they'll only push mobs so you don't actually have to worry about them however before these it is kind of hard to actually efficiently cool these down without being pushed all around so what i'm probably going to do is i'm going to build a box like slightly around here and i'm going to set up some module gate tubes, which are these guys I just showed you. Where do they go? Right here, the air grade two modules. And these will cool down our heat sinks so I can add another two or three speed upgrades in our flux compressor so that it'll build up with pressure a lot faster than it is because like I said, it's dropping and we need a decent amount of pressure to keep this entire wall running. Also, I couldn't figure out a system for glycerol because I remembered I have a vortex tube underneath this thermomatic processing plant to heat it up. So we couldn't really move the sulfur downwards. So unfortunately, the glycerol is just going to sit like this for now. Once again, we're not going to be using biodiesel for much longer. Eventually, we'll get diesel. So we can get rid of this down the line. However, not my main concern at the moment. It is a small price to pay for our entire setup. Also, if I did mention, latex is going to both of these tanks now. 
so that it could make the phenolytic resin over here, which it will make some more once it has more pressure, I guess. However, that is that setup for now. I will come back to you once these are all done so we can just get the redstone acid and get our first PCB today. I went ahead and set up our air grade modules and I just really want to show this off real quick because I just want to like I want to show the reason why you want these module expansion cards on them because it is impossible to run towards these guys when they are powered. I, like I'm going to be pushed off the edge if I try going any closer so I'm gonna to have to grab myself flight real quick which once again I need to set up but yeah I can actually come down here with flight and not be pushed around which is nice so I do need to bring flight out here this is a major reason however as you see these guys are building a pressure and this guy is down to 31 degrees now so I've gone ahead and put them on all sides except the bottom like i didn't fill up the bottom however you can eventually once you have enough speed upgrades that it requires them however i can throw another two speed upgrades in here probably and hopefully build this guy up in so much pressure that well obviously i won't blow up because i do have a pressure tube right here i'm sorry not a pressure tube but i have the valve safety valve Oh and yeah, by the way, I went ahead and added a third magnetite block rotation like over here. So we made four originally. We didn't have the stress units to run them. I went ahead and disconnected our cake factory. And while we don't have the rotational force to make rotational compressors anymore, right? We're not using the rotational compressors. So I was able to... Oh. As I was saying before, I was rudely fried to death. I was making myself... What was I even saying? Yeah, I made myself an extra one so I could have an energy buffer with our basic energy cube you get from the quest. And this just gives us an energy buffer in case we use up too much power down below and it has time to catch up. But yeah, this guy's making 735 FE per tick and it's working very nicely. However, I do have to wait for our redstone acid to catch up down below. Once all of our pressure builds up with a few more speed upgrades, we should be good to make our first PCB. So I'll catch you guys back once that is done. And it's finally done. It's taken a while. As you see, I'm also on half HP. I ran into the coils uh, back here. The wire, sorry. Very, very not a smart idea. However, this does make a lot. I never realized. However, the redstone acid is 100 millibuckets to give 1640. I thought, like, I thought it was like a thousand millibuckets gave this little amount, but no, it's 100 per 6040. So it it did it did take a while. But it wasn't too bad. Up here we have our destabilized redstone, which once again will be used to remind you to fill our logic circuits to make an empty PCB. However, the first thing we've got to do is grab out our redstone acid, bring it up here to our fluid mixer, which I've gone ahead and set up. And all I have to do is chuck it in here, mix it up, and I should get a bucket of etching acid. Perfect. With that bucket of etching acid, come down here into our etching tank. So the etching tank back here doesn't require any pressure. And it won't use any etching acid unless you heat it up. Now, heating it up will speed up the process of the etching. However, what's really nice is with the temporal pouch, which I've used a lot of time on recently doing this, is with the temporal pouch, you will actually speed up the process anyways without using any etching acid. So your etching acid will never disappear. This 1,000 buckets will always stay here as long as you don't heat it up. As you see, the etching time is 150 seconds. And then in the etch the UV light box here, you can change the threshold of how much you want it to actually like make. You always want this at 100 because then you're guaranteed to get PCBs and you're never going to have something fail. So you always want that set at 100. Once again, this guy can also be sped up with the temporal pouch and he does require pressure. So I've just set it back here. Once again, temporary setup. We're not going to, we're going to make all of our PCBs at once. Well, we're going to make one PCB today. We'll make all of our PCBs later. And then we're never going to make PCBs again because we'll be done with pneumatic craft in the mod pack pretty much. However, to make the PCBs, we actually need to make ourselves the logic circuits, which are the circuit backplanes, which is the duroplast sheet and copper plates. And we have 30 duroplast sheets. So we'll go up to our workbench up here and I should be able to fly. There we go. Now with our circuit backplane, we can go ahead and make our logic circuit now once I have the copper wires. Oh, we don't have any more electronic components. Well, we're only making the one PCB. That's my, that was my goal today. And that's what I want to do. So we'll take our logic circuit back down here. Oh, where did my elevator go? There we go. We'll throw it in this fluid encapsulator right here. It will fill up. And now we have an empty PCB. This empty PCB will go into our UV light box. And it will sit here and it will slowly etch. However, like I said, with higher pressure, it will etch faster. So it's going decently fast. 
However, you can speed this up with the temporal pouch. So I'll speed it up four times. Oh, I didn't want to rotate that. <laughs> that was bad. However, I can speed this up and it will go very fast. Once this is done, we'll stick it in our extra tank, do the same thing, and we can build our first PCB. And then we can end the episode off because I know I've done a lot today. I've also dragged this episode on, having the little kerfuffle at the beginning of the episode, trying to get our married crusher or the one of the crushers that is. However, this guy should finish any second now and then we can throw it in our tank. This guy here is finishing up any second now. I have it at 16x speed just because the longer, the higher it gets in chance to etch, the longer it takes to actually etch. And now we throw it in here. And as you see, the etching progress is slowly going up. Once again, you can speed this guy up. It actually can go as fast as you want. It doesn't use any pressure. The only thing it does is use heat. Once again, no heat is being used. So now we have our unassembled PCB and we can bring this upstairs. And like I said, we use these traders over here to get our transistors and capacitors right. So we don't actually need to craft them. So that's why I was fine taking down my pressure chamber. However, if we come over here and click U on this guy, we can make our first PCB. Finally, I spent very long today getting this PCB done. However, we have everything down below passively automated now. It requires no intervention other than filling up, I guess, silver and redstone and sulfur and stuff like that. However, I can fill those drawers up with thousands at a time. And then in the future, we'll have ender tanks and ender chests to do all that for us. However, for now, we have one PCB. We're going to make a bunch more in the coming episodes. And we'll get all the quests done and hopefully send ourselves up to the moon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was quite fun. We did a lot, but... I hope it wasn't too confusing. If there's any questions you guys have, or if you guys would like to teach me something about my setup, leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on the video. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads or any other videos, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.